We're all immigrants to each other's generations. Think about coming into a country and navigating different beliefs and different cultures and different communication styles. And each generation, that cohort, brings with them different traditions, different beliefs, different culture, and has anybody noticed different communication styles, right? We all have our own language from our communications. If we learn to speak the right generational language, we can not only enhance our relationships, but we can also boost our referrals because it takes a new strategy now. So today we're going to look at two different aspects of how we can boost our referrals. We're going to talk about referral marketing, and then we'll talk about um, how to pivot our association and study club so that we are accommodating <coughs> excuse me, all of the generations. If we use a blended marketing strategy, we are much better off at getting positive results. Passive marketing can include things like third-party food delivery, generic gifts, um, blogs and vlogs and newsletters. And I specifically used this picture. This is what happened in our office. We would, we would smell it. <laughs> at 10.30, because our lunch was at 11, we would, <laughs> anybody smell pizza? We'd go out and there'd be four or five pizzas on the, on the team lounge tables. And of course, we'd all come out and dine and dash, right? Everybody uses their lunch hour for various things. We never knew who it was from. We never knew who, what it was for. So what I encourage you to do is set yourself apart. Send things that are meaningful to the people that are, you're referring to so that they associate it with your office. And this is an office, an oral surgery office I just worked with a few months ago. And on pie day, they sent an apple pie to all of their referrals. How great is that? And they branded it beautifully. I, can you see that they had their logo embedded on the lid as well as on the card? And then on the flip side of the card was a really nice personal mef message. So think outside the box of how you can make people feel special and thank them for the referrals and also have them associate the gift with who it's from, instead of just sending those pizzas, which I love pizza, so. <laughs> <laughs> I was okay with that. Active marketing takes a lot of different forms. We could, we could talk all day about active marketing, but the three that I have used and that I've seen work really well, number one, face-to-face -face meetings. You cannot go wrong with a face-to-face -face meeting. You're going to improve your relationships, right? You'll also find out very quickly if you're a good fit for each other because you don't want it, a relationship for referrals to be one-sided. And you just can't go wrong with that. Second, if you create a marketing one-sheet, a one-sheet is your avatar for really marketing your practice and helping people understand who would benefit from seeing you. And so a marketing sheet, you should have your superpowers on it as well. And your superpowers, you should only have one or two superpowers listed the do-it-all just doesn't work for anyone, right? So find out what your superpowers are. The best way that I've, I've seen offices do this is look at your reviews. Take your four and five star reviews, whatever platform you're using, pull those reviews out, put it into AI, and ask two questions. Number one, what are patients saying the most positive statements or words about our practice? And the second question, what are the most positive words the patients are saying about Dr. Jones? Dr. Smith, right? You want one, one, one sheet, one, one sheet <laughs> for each provider, right? You want, and then on your flip side of your one sheet is your perfect ideal patient. Who would benefit from seeing you the most? And you have that ready everywhere you go. Team members get it. Can we can take it one step further and create a 10 minute marketing presentation. And so what you do is you highlight a service that you would like more referrals coming in for. I worked with a periodontist and we worked, he wanted to increase his referrals for grafting. Amazing, amazing grafting. He was in Seattle. You might know him actually. Um, he wanted to increase his referrals and he created this brilliant presentation, but he was a periodontist. What did the presentation look like? Right? <laughs> it was a lot of detail. So we downsized it, downsized it, downsized it to 10 minutes and we called it getting to the root of the problem. He scheduled once a month 
with either an existing practice or a practice that he wanted to be referring to him, and he and his office manager went in and delivered the presentations. As soon as he started doing that, he saw an increase in referral, and the better part of that was the patients came in and they were so much more knowledgeable about what they were being referred to him for that they scheduled on their way out. And so he had an increase in production, right? So you have your one sheet ready, you hand it to every single team member that is in that meeting. You always want to deliver it to the, the full team because they're really the ones that are prompting the referrals, right? They'll stash it in their cupboard. They'll put it in their locker. They'll have a patient in the chair the next day and go, oh, this is exactly what Dr. Jones was talking about. This is a perfect patient to refer to them. And so it an increase in production. So you want to be able to repurpose something like this, because it takes a while to, to really downsize to 10 minutes and be able to deliver it. A couple ways you can do that in your association and study club membership, um, have a night or an evening or an event where six or seven of the doctors that have prepared this 10 minute presentation deliver the presentation to each other. Widen your reach and invite all the team members. The more people you can get your message to, the better. The other way you could do it is have a continuing education event and provide CE for that event and then have two or three of the doctors or the practices present. And I think it's good if two people go to the offices and present because you meet different sides of the practice, right? It's important for us to meet the team members as well. When you're planning your study club and association events, look at it from a generational view. Right? We have to pivot what we're doing. We can't continue to do the same things and expect to get new members into our associations. And so vary your workshops and virtual and live. And you, know, you, I'm, you can see the gray, er gray areas on that chart where we actually don't have a meeting. And I base this on 12 months. Not every association has 12 meetings a year. But give yourself breathing room. Right? You can either do a, a virtual event or just a blog, a vlog, and a new or a newsletter. Right, and then think about the other things. So you want to be able to attract the new members, right, and the younger generations, but you also want to maintain your existing loyal membership. So we've talked about three ways that we can increase our referrals. We've talked about generational language, we looked at um, marketing techniques, and then we talked about pivoting our calendars for our events so that we're appealing to various generations. I challenge you after today's presentation to take one of the two suggestions that I put on the slide, either create a one sheet or think about how you're going to strategize changing your event calendar to really appeal to everyone and give yourself some goals. Get the right people involved, give yourself some goals and try to do it by the end of this month. We're right in the beginning of this month, so try to do it by the end of the month. Creating a communication strategy is a lot like cooking. You take all these really good ingredients and you blend them all together and you get this really yummy dish. And the first time I created this slide, it was all desserts. And I thought, huh, there's my sweet tooth show and throw, right? <laughs> so our ingredients are the diverse generations that we interact with. They're the study club memberships and the association memberships. And they're the unique people that we're referring to and the unique practices that we're referring to. The spices are the way that we customize that communication. How are you going to make it unique for each individual practice and for each individual purpose? And the ultimate goal or the ultimate result is you get a continual funnel of patients being referred to you and you grow your association and study club membership. Thank you. <laughs> am I staying or am I going? You can you can go, <laughs> but I have to tell you you like you like um, took me back to the days in the practice where we would get treats, and my favorite gift that we ever got was this five gallon bucket of tortilla chips, that was from somewhere in San Antonio and a bit like three big jars of salsa that were delivered that was like oh, it was the gift. best gift that we would get in our practice that's a good idea yeah there and they go. were like the best <laughs> chips so i was like oh yeah i really miss those days and we get all the treats and the smells and all of that so i love it thank yeah. you lisa very good job